There is a way that you can make your own non-New York style pizza right at home. What we do is we use Rhodes brand bread dough. It might be available near you. Uh, it's frozen. You can find it in your grocer's freezer. And then what we do is we put it out on the stove so it can start to thaw. That's the first step. Okay, the dough has had a chance to sit on the stove for about an hour or two, and it's now room temperature. So what I've done is I've taken a baking sheet and I've coated it in uh, Crisco. You can use Crisco or a house brand or lard even, and um, coat the pan, and then also slather it over the dough and place the dough in the center of the pan. Next, we're gonna cover it and put it in the oven. Now you can cover it with cling film. Saran is a popular brand. You can also use a house brand or other form of cling film. As it happens, this dough was the last in a three pack of pizza dough in this Rhodes box. So what I've done is I've taken a food safe scissors and I've cut the side and the bottom of the bag to make a large sheet of plastic. So I can put it over that because that serves the same purpose as the new brand clink film. And then I just put it into the oven. The oven is not on. Put it in there and I leave it in there to rise and while it's rising we just go about our day. Okay the day has transpired it's been a good day I hope you've had a good day too and our next step is we're going to see how the dough has risen in the oven so let's have a look. Okay well it seems like it did pretty well take off the plastic and we can discard that and there's the dough and it's risen pretty well the active enzyme hasn't really done so well we've had this dough a little while admittedly sometimes it'll rise up and it'll look like a big rugby ball or a piglet under there but what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna set the oven to 425 and then I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna stretch out this dough to fill in this baking pan okay now you can see that the crust has been spread out across the pan evenly covering it and you can see there's built up little ridges around the side for the crust the edges of the crust and now it's time to focus on the toppings making the sauce and we're going to begin with tomato puree um, you might have a favorite brand um, but this is just kind of the base uh, we use tomato puree and I have found that typically about um, five to six uh, of these kind of tablespoons is enough to cover the pizza. So I'll get started on that. I'll spread it around and I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, the tomato puree is now spread across the crust. We don't want to super saturate it, but we certainly want to give it a nice covering. And now we're ready to start seasoning it. And our seasonings are black pepper, garlic powder, oregano, and basil. And that's kind of the order that I tend to apply them to the pizza, and that's based on what's most visible, going from the least visible to the most visible so that I know how much I'm putting on. Okay, to illustrate that, I'm gonna start with the black pepper. And like I said, this is probably the least visible of the seasonings. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over the entire pizza, or what will be a pizza, just grinding a nice, one pass covering of black pepper across the entire pie. Next, I'm gonna go with garlic powder. Again, this stuff is not highly visible, so I'm gonna put it on next. And it, just like with the black pepper, I'm gonna cover the entire sauced area with garlic powder seasoning. Next, oregano. And actually, these last two you could do in whatever order. There's some people that say that oregano and basil fight each other, and you should use one or the other, but in this case, we're just gonna use both. In fact, the margarita pizza, which is considered the original pizza, the basic one, is made with just basil. But this, in this case, for our homemade version, we're gonna use both. So there's the oregano, and then the dried basil. We're just going to shake it across the whole thing again. You don't want to super saturate any of it with any of the seasonings. Whoops, I kind of dropped a little bit too much there. It's a little heavy, but won't be won't be bad. 
Just again, a nice even covering. And we're done with those. Okay, we're ready to start our toppings. This one's gonna be a mushroom pizza. So I've got one small can of mushrooms. This one's six and a half ounces or 184 grams. This should be enough to cover this entire pizza well. Uh, sometimes you want a meat pizza like sausage or pepperoni. You could apply that at this time as well. Whatever toppings you'd like. If you do go with sausage or pepperoni, I'd recommend a naturally cured uh, type of those meats. Go with a natural sausage or a naturally cured pepperoni. Anyway, this one is going to be a mushroom pizza. Uh, this, these mushrooms have been drained and we're just going to place them on the pizza now. And there is a, um, a debate about do the toppings go under the cheese or do they go on top of the cheese. And a lot of places, a lot of pizza places, will put the toppings on top of the cheese and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, from the merchants and the customers point of view, it makes a lot of good sense because if you order, say, a pepperoni pizza, if you put the pepperoni under the cheese, well then if you're a server and you're bringing pizza or pizza by the slice to your customers, well you can tell at first blush what kind of pizza it is. And then if you're the customer, you can see indeed that you've got the pizza you've ordered. But here we're just making pizza at home, so we can put the, put the toppings under the cheese or over the cheese. Homemade pizza, so we get to call the shots. Now cheese. We're going to put cheese on the pizza. I'm going to start with a wedge of Parmesan and I'm going to use a grater and I'm going to grate a nice even layer of Parmesan across the pizza. Not, not too deep. Um, we're just going to give it a nice coating. Oops. Just again evenly getting the Parmesan across the cheese that nice flavor. All the way across, kind of going back and looking for spots I may have missed, just so we get a nice even coating of Parmesan. It's looking good. Okay, that's it. Next, mozzarella. How much? Everything you see here. Well, shake it up to loosen it up. And then I'm going to actually, my hands are washed, so I'm going to just sprinkle the cheese across the pizza. Just kind of articulating with my fingers to get it to distribute evenly across making sure that my crust edges are clear of cheese so that it doesn't burn to the sides of the pan. Pinch to grow an inch. Okay, and I'm just gonna spread it out a little bit evenly. Again, cleaning up the edges, making sure that I don't have any cheese on the metal of the pan. And I think we're okay. The oven, meanwhile, is still heating up. Uh, it'll be ready soon. So we'll take that step to putting it in the oven as soon as the oven is ready. Okay, good news. The oven is now preheated to 425 degrees. Our pizza is assembled and it's ready to go into the oven. So we're going to open the oven and we're actually going to take our pizza and we are going to put it on the lowest rack. When we put it on the lowest rack, it's going to cook the crust first and not burn the cheese. We're going to put it in there for 12 minutes and in 12 minutes we're going to check and see how it's doing. If it looks like the bottom is done but the top has a little ways to go, then we have the option of moving it up in the oven racks to a higher spot so that it'll cook, finish cooking the cheese without uh, scorching the crust. Now you might have noticed that we opened a new can of puree when we were putting the sauce on the pizza. So while the pizza is cooking, I'm going to take the rest of this puree and I'm going to put it in ice cube trays. This way I can reserve it in, in an easy to store place in a freezer 
for a long time keeping so that next weekend I can pop out another five or six cubes of puree, put it in the microwave to thaw them, and use them for next Saturday's pizza sauce. Okay, the timer has gone off. Let's see how our pizza is doing. Ooh, look at that. It looks great. Got a nice little golden uh, flex on the cheese. The crust is looking good. What we'll do is we'll take it up here to the top and we'll inspect the underside of the crust just to make absolutely sure it's ready to go. Got a spatula. Peel back a corner. Oh, look at that. See that crust? That's ready to eat. You can serve it with a green salad, uh, enjoy it with bubbly water, iced tea, a red wine that you like, a crisp pilsner or lager, and credit where credit is due. This recipe I learned from Cheryl. This is her family's recipe that goes back generations. It's probably been adapted over time to match the evolution of appliances and the availability and the methods of obtaining ingredients. So she taught it to me and now I'm teaching it to you. Use it well.